Hi, Paul Thompson here from Spitfire Audio. Something exciting for you today. It's a blast from the past, or indeed three blasts from the past. These are the original three Albions that we've made. Um, we've had so many messages and emails from people saying, uh, please, can you make these available again, that we have decided to put them back up on the website. So I hear the questions, what uh, is the difference between, for example, Albion 1 or Albion Legacy, we call it now, the very first uh, orchestral library that we made commercially, and Albion 1, O-N-E, that is currently the flagship Albion library? The answer is that in the time period between when we made the original Albion and when we made the new Albion 1, um, tastes had changed, styles had changed in scoring, and people were after a slightly more produced sound. That's the, probably the best way that I can, that I can describe it. Um, not completely hybrid, it still sounds like a real orchestra. But, it, but it's, it's kind of slightly less imperfect, if you like. And that is the charm that the original Albions had, was that they were recorded, um, obviously recorded to tape, that was one of our first innovations, but they were recorded in a, in a way so that you could hear the humanity. Um, and I'm going to stop talking and I'm just going to play some of my favourite patches. So we're going to start with Albion 1, um, or Albion Legacy, as it's also referred to. Um, like I say, the very first orchestral library we ever made commercially. Here are the low strings. So you get the idea, it's a really full, fat, meaty sound. And you'll also hear that the basses um, are recorded at pitch with the cellos, and then they extend down to that bottom octave uh, where the cellos can't reach. Now, one of the things that we felt was important was to capture the sound of the strings playing in octaves. It's a really, really common orchestration device. And so we have two different versions of these low strings. And this is the version with the basses playing an octave below the cellos. And as you can hear, it does have a certain something. Um, we've obviously got all the kind of usual stuff, all your straightforward longs, Really lovely sound. You've got muted strings in here as well. And it's fabulous legato. And there's a ton of incredible effects in here. Let me just play these. As you can see, I'm clicking these little um, memory chip icons on the bottom. This was the original way that we had for loading and unloading articulations. So it loads up with a few of these switched off to save your memory, but obviously you can pick exactly what you want loaded this way. And there's a ton of really cool effects in there like that. I don't really need to go into too much detail. Now, there are two um, ostinatum things here. So if we look at this page, you can see that we have the ostinatum machine. Um, I won't go into that in detail now, keep this brief, um, but you'll be able to find videos online about how that works. It's a great kind of orchestral arpeggiator, if you like. And we designed two uh, ostinatum techniques for this. One is the Titus Spiccato. cope with my dodgy playing. And then a slightly uh, slower, more brushed, uh, kind of leisurely style for those slower ostinatos where you want it to feel really kind of relaxed. Okay, so let's uh, have a quick look at some of my favorite high string sounds. So I'll just pop up my favorite mic mix. Um, with the mics, it's the usual close tree uh, ambience and the outriggers, which give you that nice width on the tree. So the shorts. Really great stuff. And then cheeky pits.
And it's got that fantastic, really live sound to it, a slightly loose sound, which is incredibly useful. But as I say, it's not that very produced sound, very tight sound. It's a nice kind of um, live is probably the, the best way of describing it. Um, we've also recorded things in octaves. And that, if we go to uh, the legatos, you'll hear um, works really well for the legato. So here's the standard legato. Beautiful consort. And then the octaves. Again, a ton of effects, all your consorty bits and all that stuff, but um, spiccato, ostinatum. You get the idea, all that kind of stuff. Now, um, the brass is split into three different sections. I'm gonna show you the mid first, uh, and we'll have a very quick look at some of these. So this one has a really nice trombone -y kind of sound to it. Um, the low has this uh, fabulous uh, kind of, again, fat, epic sound. And it's orchestrated. As you can hear, split over octaves. Again, a stylistic choice. To give you a really nice fat bottom end. And the high brass, again, is orchestrated. Um, it's the horns and trumpets. And when you have those playing together, they have to play, well, <laughs> if you don't have them play an octave apart, the range is very, very small. But here, Beautiful, bright, fruity, powerful sound. And with the uh, all of these legatos, you can control the speed. You can get more of the um, transition sound. So it's really useful for when you're playing slower. Um, you can have slightly more of that note change sound in there, but obviously it makes the patch play slightly laggier. Now, this is one of my favorite little experiments. Um, I had this idea of, uh, from scores like The Fugitive and Jerry Goldsmith scores and things like that, I love the kind of what I call the attack piano. Um, and it's the bottom couple of octaves of the piano. It's actually positioned in the middle, so it's nice and easy to find. But... It's got that kind of sound, a little bit more ringy and a very tight mute. And then some wonderful effects. For the fistful of, of notes, <laughs> but also. I've overused that one for sure. <laughs> um, so there's some great sounds in there as well. Uh, woodwinds. Ooh. This is one of my favorite woodwind sounds that we've ever <laughs> recorded. It's got this wonderful, it's got that great kind of, it just sounds so live. Um, there's an alternative, which is, doesn't have the piccolo in, I think that was the difference there. Um, and some fantastic, again, loads of effects, loads of nice legato stuff. Again, it's really beautiful sound that, where you can hear those players. And if we pull the speed right down. Then you hear more of the kind of key clicks and all that kind of stuff. So that's really useful. OK, last but not least, I'm not going to go through everything in this much detail, but I think it's really worth it with the very first Albion. Just to hear those patches, the low woodwinds. And again, you've got great effects, long the long notes, and the legato, really good stuff in there. Now you've got these great things like the time machine patches where you can shorten or lengthen the short notes using a, a CC controller, that's really useful. But what else is in here? Well, Darwin. Um, so with the Darwin percussion, and this uh, evolved over the years actually, uh, we added various bits and pieces to the library over the first few years that it was released. Um, this is a two-player section. 
all kinds of stuff, uh, muted, ringing, cymbals and gongs, as it says, cymbals one, two, and then tams and gongs, some really great stuff in there. Easter Island hits, the uh, boom. That was my favorite one, <laughs> the lowest D. Um, but there's lots of different styles in there. Uh, what have we got here? Metal shop. Lots of anvily type stuff. And then just generic percussion hits. So we start with the lowest. Subs. Low, mid. Uh, high. Um, and then sticks. And an all in one. So uh, some really great stuff in there. And then swells, just some played swells. Um, we've got these uh, Brunel loops. Now there's some really cool stuff in here. So let's start with the bamboo sticks. Where it says mod wheel dynamic, you've got uh, th three different, I think it is dynamics. Um, and these are all, uh, these will all match the tempo that you're using. And they give you that. Okay, you get the idea. They give you that um, beautiful textural kind of ticky things. And the way that I use them is I'll play with the mod wheel to get a dynamic flow to them, but I'll also control them using the expression slider. And I'll sometimes bring them in from absolutely nothing and then just fade them out and bring them back in again. And if you have two or three of these going uh, and you've got them in, you know, maybe pan them to different positions and you independently shape them, you get a really interesting uh, texture to your rhythm track. And it just keeps, it keeps the flow of rhythm um, in a really useful way. Now, uh, Stevenson's theme band was us taking all of the orchestral recordings and then just going mad with a load of outboard, lots and lots of different effects and kind of putting things through different treatments. I'll give you a couple of examples. So the Grand Pianola, um, no prizes for guessing what that came from. And again, it's mod wheel controlled. love some of these. There's some really great haunting sounds. You've also got the uh, tree mic as a source and the ambient mics as a source. So and the idea of this was just to was to create a synth but using the organic recordings of the orchestra. And it's it's something that we've done on a number of different libraries. Um, and it just gives you something slightly different because it doesn't start as a waveform or a wavetable or something like that. Because it has that kind of evolving, undulating, organic texture of the real, you know, the, the sound of the orchestra playing, it's constantly changing and, and you find some really interesting textures within there. So it's incredibly useful. And that is split into drones, Atmoses, uh, will be all Ostinati, and then Redux was an update with just more of the same. So some really cool stuff in there as well. So that is Albion 1, Albion Legacy. Um, I'm going to move on now to Albion 2, uh, also called Logia. And where Albion 1 was uh, the epic, everything you need to make an epic film score in one package, for Albion 2, uh, we decided to go to the indie, intimate, um, beauty, detail, smaller section, and slightly unusual wind and brass, as you'll see. Interesting this, because what we found was that you can really get a sense of intensity with these smaller sections. But it sounds crisper, tighter, more intimate. I mean, if I play some of the alternatives, so this is a slightly longer consort. And you can really get that delicate stuff. Um, but the pits is. Some great stuff in there. Wow, it sounds beautiful. The longs. Now, what we did for the strings here was we recorded half sections as well.
And there is also a, um, if you hit the key harder, you get a stronger attack. It's like an alternative attack. It's actually probably worth listening to the legatos. And compare that to the half section. And you can hear the individual players, and that's what I love about this. I mean, we'll, uh, we've, we have to look at Flantando. <laughs> um, as that's become a favorite. Um, let's check out the high strings and let's just jump straight over to those legatos. As you can see, clicking those memory chips again to load the individual articulations. Uh, so here's the full section. And then a half section. So you get the idea. And then we've got some beautiful stuff. Those lovely fragile harmonics. Uh, and again, got to look at the flat hand there, really, haven't we? Short notes. So you get the idea. Definitely, uh, you can hear it's a smaller section, but it has that power. Now, brass-wise, we've got these fabulous sack butts. It's a medieval version, or oh, well, let's call it an older version of the trombone. That fabulously fruity sound. Super short. Um, and then if we go to the high sack butts, which are just, I guess, the difference between the kind of tenor and bass instrument uh, that we that we know now. Um, you've got the very shorts. And you can hear, you know, it's got that, it's got that slightly oldy sound about it. But when you want to, you can really give it some welly. Um, woodwinds, recorders, crazy stuff. <laughs> I do love the recorder. I always like substituting something unusual for a typical thing, just to get a difference in texture and maybe just to give the listener a little bit of a kind of unfamiliar territory. And if you listen to these beautiful high recorders, Definitely a bit fruitier than you would get with the flutes, for sure. Um, but it has its own beauty. I really love that. And this is one of the favourites, uh, an absolute customer favourite, the Horn Youth patch, which was a combination of French horns and euphoniums. Let's, let's check out the longs. Now it's got a really mellow, mellow sound, but it, it just has a certain beauty. You know, it's, it's got a kind of stately power to it, but it definitely is um, a really interesting combination of instruments. So let's look at what else we've got. So again, we have uh, Darwin percussion and you've got, you know, more uh, of those kind of things like these great subby booms. It's kind of uh, end of days, you know, that's, I mean, <laughs> you, you can kind of guess. And these, again, multi-mic, really very, very useful to, to have access to those different things. A ton of other stuff, again, you know, similar to, to Albion 1. Reversals, kind of, uh, let's put those in. So these are just really, really useful. You can alter the length of them. So let's pick a shorter length. Let's put the audition thing up, cuts into them so you can hear them without having to sit and wait for them to grow. You get the idea. Um, 
So some really useful sounds in there. We've got the steam band again, a ton of great um, synths made from orchestras, I guess is the way to put that. And then this is the ultimate kind of curio in this. And this is like um, <laughs> Mellotron loop library. And you've got the menu, you've got a whole load of different kind of treatments in there. There's a ton of great stuff in here for chopping up and for, you know, mangling and definitely a bit of a, a bit of a curveball, but, um, but a lot of fun. So if Albion 2 was the land of beauty, then Albion 3, Iceni, is the land of confusion, darkness, dirty, epic, huge, nastiness, 24 cellos and eight basses. And it sounds like this. So we've got a super wide dynamic range and we've recorded uh, close mics on the cellos and the basses so you can, you know, balance your sound exactly how you want. This is a slightly longer staccato. And again, the speed control. Really fabulous legato in there. Now, we also recorded the cellos on their own and we recorded them left and right. So um, here you can see that they're, that they're split into two sections on the keyboard. Now you've got all that stuff, but you've also got uh, these wonderful, actually, let's, can't can't not do this. Um, so we've got the long notes on both sides. So if we can we can split our tune like this. Now, if you want to play that stuff in legato separately, you've got the A section over here. Let's pull the um, transition speed down and go. So you've got that portamento in there. Um, and if we switch to legato B. So brass. This has got some fatness to it. The standard longs. And these wonderful nasty. There's loads of crazy effects. <laughs> all the rumbling nastiness you can imagine. Um, in amongst all this stuff, let's do the woodwind first, just a quick check out of some of these sounds because there's some really great stuff in here as well. Again, the shorts, uh, super low stuff, just those bottom instruments. And then of course, you get the idea, tons of effects as well. And this is, this is again an oversized low woodwind section. Now within the individual patches, you've got all kinds of uh, things broken out into the individual patches. So they're quite useful. Time machine stuff to alter all your, all your shorts as well. So let's, let's look at the Darwin percussion. Uh, again, a load of really crazy, brutal stuff in here. different kind of flammy hits as well, as you can hear, you know, lots of. So in the Stevenson steam band, again, we've got all kinds of crazy stuff in here made from, um, let's just load up a few things and see, made from orchestras. we do maybe satanic machinery a 
sounding a little bit scary. Um, there's some wonderful stuff in here, uh, mod wheel controlled. Really brutal, nasty stuff. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> so everything you can imagine to take you to, oh, here we are, Redux Underbase. This is a useful one. Um, so one of the things that's quite useful is to take a uh, synth with a really subby sound and put that playing the lowest part of your basses or your cellos, um, but sit it underneath so you've got a real kind of sub. It's almost like that old subharmonic synthesizers in, from the disco era. Um, but this is a, a way of doing it. You can shape the, uh, the kind of attack and release to match strings. But if you put this underneath, you've got the, uh, the, the straightforward basic stuff. You've got a, a version that's gone through the culture vulture. A little bit edgier, a bit more harmonic. And then a, a sub version, which has got even subbier, subharmonic synthesis on it. And you can blend those if you want. And then you've got a bunch of other kind of sources. So they're all slightly different flavors, but they all achieve the same thing. They all have that uh, fabulous, um, give you that rich, rich bottom end. So the final section is these Brunel loops. And there is some amazing stuff in here. So it opens with a loop menu. And they're all designed at specific tempos that tells you what the tempo is, but they will tempo sync if you switch on uh, any of the loops. They will tempo sync to the session. Um, you've got the low pass filter there and a bunch of other crazy stuff in here. Oh, I didn't mention this earlier. So we've got on this, um, on these libraries, we've got this effects panel where you can actually uh, automate various different effects here. Um, you can see, well, in this one, we've got volume, pan, tune, attack, uh, decay, sus, and release. Uh, but in this menu, you can kind of go to any of the things and you can automate any of these in any bizarre way um, using the sequence. <laughs> Some absolutely mad, mad effects that you can get with that stuff. So that's a brief overview of these three legacy Albion libraries. As I say, Albion 1 uh, legacy, which was Everything you need to create an epic film score in one box. Albion 2, the beauty, the small, the intimate, uh, some beautiful stuff in there. And Albion 3, I see me the low end exploration, the dark, the dirty, the punchy, the distorted, um, the aggressive, all that crazy stuff in there. I hope you're going to enjoy exploring these. They Some of these sounds are still in my template. There are, um, they just have a, 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 real kind of life to them and a beauty and a it's a snapshot in time you know we all have our favorites in amongst the different sounds that we find and we collate our sound out of all of the different libraries that we have um and there's some absolute corkers in here so i'm quite excited to bring them back and to see um what people start doing with them again and indeed blending these, you know, with the newer libraries that we that we then went on to replace them with. I mean, Albion 1 Legacy uh, became Albion 1, O-N-E. Um, Logear kind of became Albion Neo. So that was, that was a different, we actually recorded it in a different way then. But it's the same idea of intimacy, small string sections. And then Iceni, uh, I guess the natural, um, the natural kind of, end point of that was Colossus where you could morph between the different sizes and all of this stuff goes together really beautifully um you know it goes without saying orchestra recorded in a great space as a good starting point all of this stuff recorded to tape as well uh which which <laughs> when we told people about it at the time everyone said we were mad but actually you can hear it it's got a great sound to it um and it's worth that extra effort so I hope you're going to enjoy playing with these um Thank you very much for watching this brief overview. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.